I remember very clearly hearing that, oh, there's going to be this movie, Grand Theft Auto, and it's directed by Ron Howard. Now, since then, we're very familiar with the idea of an on-camera person directing right. a film. Or, right. But I remember at the time thinking, what? Yeah. yeah. It was very, it wasn't done. It mm. didn't feel like this is really, you know. Well, uh, I felt that. I felt that pressure because, you know, I mean, I was that, I might, I might as well have had that famous t-shirt. What I really want to do is direct since I was about 14, you know, and I would, and I would get the most sort of patronizing responses when I would admit it. And, but I, I, but I also made the most out of those situations and I would, I would hang with the directors and take notes and do all kinds of things. Um, and, uh, but, but, you know, yeah, that was not a transition and, and particularly to have been a kid actor on a sitcom, it, it, you know, the whole thing, it was, it was ludicrous in people's uh, minds. You must have a, a confidence because you knew on some level, you knew I got this. Yes, I did. I really, I mean, and, I mean, in fact, I, you know, the, I directed, the, started shooting Grand Theft Auto the day after my 23rd birthday, but I was disappointed because I had really planned to direct a feature while I was still in my teens. That was, yeah. that was my that was my goal, you know. And, right. and uh, uh, but uh, uh, but it, but you know, again, it was the business was so much more closed then, and then there were and and there was there was not even any like MTV or anything where you could go and prove your chops somewhere. Um, it or was today, any you know, people can make. Uh, a film using their phone. You take this phone and and, and you, you make something, something. People go, excellent. hey, that was, and then the, you put it online. And if it, you don't need to convince a studio if it gets like, oh, this got like, you know, ten million likes. Yeah, yeah. you're good. You 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 have a chance of making something. Well, by the way, I just got to jump to you know the 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 documentary that we're going to talk yes. about, uh, yeah. Jim Henson. Um, I made a documentary about about Jim Henson and the Muppets, and mm -hmm. and but he and his wife Jane were so much like the content young content creators of today. Yes, yes. Because they they're the new medium, the new thing, the tech that was interesting to them was TV, which was just brand new. And he wasn't even interested in puppets, but he loved television. He wanted to be a part of it. He was you know he was living in in Washington, and um, and he. The, he went down there and just kind of they looked for they were looking for a five minute puppet show to go with the news. I mean, you know, but they were just experimenting with TV. And he got in on the experiment along with Jane, ultimately became his wife. But you you look at these crazy little six second commercials they did and these little five minute bits they did for for after the news hour. And it was so inventive. And and it was all bets are off and just kind of whatever you want to do. But they were doing they were getting their ten thousand hours in and they were doing yes. what a what a content creator does now, which is find your voice, see if anybody's interested, figure out what they're interested in, and and um, you know and go for there. Well, at that time there was there was really no outlet like that for me. I mean, I literally was thinking about going down to public access television and trying to like do a show on public access television because right. uh, getting the chance to direct a feature film. Uh, it, it, see, uh, uh, entertainment was so much smaller. You said it was closed. It was a very insular world. Yes. There's three networks. Right. There's a couple of studios. They make the stuff. They decide who the people are. And yeah. so very impossible to crack into that. Yeah. And especially if they have a preconceived notion. Like, I'm sorry, you're the guy from Happy Days and you're Opie. You, now, you I could have had this. a chance to direct Happy Days episodes in a contract renegotiation, but I said no to that because I didn't want anybody other than Jerry Paris to direct, it would be not fair to the cast. And the other thing I thought was, well, what if I whiff? You know, every once in a while, there, an episode doesn't work. Yeah. And as, if I do well, they say, well, it's his show. If I, if I, if I have an off episode, then what, well, he can't even direct his own show? Right. And it's three camera, not right. what I wanted to do. But Roger Corman was one of the few people who was taking that kind of a risk. And yeah. I knew that about him. And he wanted me to act in a movie called Eat My Dust. And I read Eat My Dust and I didn't much care for it. Uh, <laughs> I, I saw no Oscars in, <laughs> in, my, in, you know, no Oscar opportunities in that one. But, uh, but, but I did have a script that I'd written that was, a, was kind of a slice of life about a guy over, stuck over college break and, you know, in, in Hollywood. And, um, and I had some short films and I, I was supposed to go in and have this meeting about, about Eat My Dust. 
American Graffiti had been a big hit. Happy yep. Days was becoming a number one show. And Roger wanted me to be in this, in this car crash comedy. And uh, my agent was going to come with me to sit with me to have this meeting. And he was my agent for like my whole childhood. And I, and I remember saying, you can't, you can't go in with me. I was only, I was only 21, but I knew I was going to try to barter. Yeah. And he, he didn't care about that. I knew he didn't care about that. So I, 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 I remember the look on his face. He was shattered. You know, I mean, this, his client said, no, don't go to the meeting. So I went in, talked to Roger. I said, I, you know, I, I don't love uh, eat, eat my dust, but what I really want to do is direct. Here's a script. I think I've raised half the money coming out of Australia, yep. 150,000. I need another 150,000 in distribution. And if you do that, then I'll, I'll happily be in Eat My Dust. He, he read it. He got back to me. He looked at my student films. Uh, and he said, uh, well, that's a character piece. It's very well written, but it's not what I do. And he said, uh, here's, what, here's what I'll promise you. If, you. if you act in Eat My Dust, I'll give you a chance to write a script. If you write the script and I like it, and you're willing to be in it again, then I'll let you direct that. If that fails, I'll let you direct the you know, second unit on something and the car crashes or the fights or something else. So I thought, okay, so my big, <laughs> I leveraged my way into a second unit job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to look great on the resume, but I took it. Uh, and, uh, and, and when, uh, when Eat My Dust succeeded, um, I went in and I pitched so many different ideas, a sci-fi thing, a noir thing, uh, you know, I, just different kinds of projects. And he smiled and he said, he said, when we were testing, he was very erudite, Roger. Yes, I remember, yeah. Uh, he had been to Caltech and he was yeah. an engineering, you know, an, an engineer at heart. He said, when we were testing titles for Eat My Dust, there was another title that came in a very strong second, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> if you can fashion a car crash comedy that we can correctly entitle Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> I'd, pro I'd probably make that picture. Yeah. And my dad and I cooked up an outline. We wrote a script in a month. It was the fastest green light I've had in my entire career as a director. You know, uh, and, and I think he, Roger Corman passed, I believe, a week ago. A week ago, yes. Yeah. And um, age 98. 98 years so old. So sharp. I talked to him six months ago. I mean, he went to see my 13 lives. He went to a screening. He had, he, you know, he was so supportive of, of all, the, all, all of his graduates. He, he just huh. remained. Well, he must have so been connected. incredibly proud of what you, you know, he was proud off. of all of us. Yeah. He was proud of all of us. Jim Cameron, Joe yeah. Dante, Alan Arkish, you know, uh, hell, Francis Coppola and Scorsese, Bogdanovich. The list goes on.